What is up squeegee slingers and water fed pole wiggling wagglers and welcome back to the Tradman YouTube channel and yes indeed we're talking about pricing your work well so that you can work steady. Stay tuned. So the first question we have to ask ourselves is why is pricing so important? And the answer to that is that you can have the greatest and the latest tools but if your pricing isn't so good and it's too low, then you're gonna be working a lot longer and harder than you need to. So let's talk about pricing and just how we can get good pricing so that we don't have to work crazy long hours to try and get a good wage in. So how do you get well-priced work then? Well, personally, I would recommend, number one, having a good pricing structure. So whether that is the size of the building, how many windows there are, what type of windows, whatever works best for you, stick to that pricing structure and have an hourly rate in your mind that you are aiming for. So just as an example, for me personally, when I come up to a standard window, I know I charge, say, one pound or two pounds for if it's double the size, or if it's sash and case windows, I might charge three to four pounds or something like that. I've got it all written down in my book, how much I charge for each type of window. So when I'm going around the job, I know it's, say for instance, a pound for that one, two pounds for that one, a pound 50 for that one. And then when I get to my total, I then round it up to the nearest five pounds. So for instance, if we get to 27 pounds 50 on the job, I round it up to 30 pounds. And that way it gives you a little bit more breathing room in case, for instance, it takes a little bit longer than you thought. Always charge just ever so slightly more than you think just to make sure that you're covering your bases. Now, if you like to count how much per window, there's a really good app, and I'll leave a link in the description below. It's called the Window Counter. I've just been using this fairly recently. It's quite good, and you can set, like, for each window how much it is. So when you're walking around, you can say, well, that's a pound, click the button, that's two pounds, click the button, that's 10 pounds, click the button, and it gives you your total at the bottom of the screen. So a very handy little app there, but you can also obviously do it with pen and paper as well and just tally up how much windows there are and how much you're charging for each window as you walk around the premises. Now for first cleans or one-off cleans, what I would suggest you do is give them a ballpark price. Now, you have to give them a fairly accurate quotation, so you don't want to be miles apart from say, well, it could be 100 pounds, it could be 500 pounds, because that's no use to your customers. But if you say, for instance, you thought the job was gonna be somewhere between 100 and 150, you weren't quite sure, just depends, maybe it had a lot of ingrained mess, you didn't know how long it was exactly gonna take, you could tell them, well, it is gonna be somewhere between 100 and 150 or something like that, and then that gives them an idea roughly how much it's going to be. So if it does take you that little bit longer, you've priced it well, you can work steady, and you don't have to work like crazy because you've realized you've underpriced it. And that same way of pricing works even for the bigger jobs as well. So if we come across jobs where we think it's gonna be a pretty hefty sum, then we will tell them, we will say, well, your approximate quotation today is between here and here, depending on how long we spend on site. That way, like I say, we're avoiding any cutting ourselves short and potentially losing a lot of money we should have really been earning. The next thing I wanted to talk to you folks about was don't be too tempted to drop your prices. There are people out there that were just born to haggle with you. So, you know, and at the end of the day, if they're looking for a really cheap service, now what's to say that they don't drop you as quickly as that for the next cheap window cleaner that comes along? So unless you're absolutely desperate for work, I would highly suggest that you try and avoid those that are trying to just go for the cheapest window cleaner type idea. You will get a feel for those kinds of customers. And the kind of customers you want are those that are happy to pay you what you're asking for. So they're happy to pay you a fair, decent wage for a good quality job in return. The last thing you want is a whole schedule full of people that were just looking for a cheap window cleaner. And when you come to clean them, they tell you, actually, I don't need you anymore. I found somebody cheaper. So it avoids that problem altogether. So just have your thinking caps on 
and try and avoid those really, really cheap haggling customers. Now, what if your potential client questions why you are so much more expensive? Say, for instance, there are other window cleaners in the area that are considerably cheaper than you are, then what do you do? How do you go about justifying your higher price? Well, what to definitely not do is say, well, that company doesn't do this and that company doesn't do that and focus on negativities. Instead, what to do is focus on positivities of what you yourself can offer them. So try and explain to them what makes you stand out as different without naming and shaming your local companies. Just tell your customer, well, we do the frames, the panes, the sills, your doors, everything is absolutely spotless when we're finished and we spend that time that's needed on your home or business, whatever it may be, and hence why our price is that bit more. But what we can guarantee is that you can practically eat your dinner off of the windows when we're finished with them. Something along that kind of lines. It shows that you're confident in what you can do, what you can provide, and that you know that you can justify your price and that you're not trying to scam them or you're trying to basically show what you can do. So just to sort of quickly recap what we're saying, make sure you have a good pricing structure that you're happy with and stick to it and have an hourly rate in mind that you're trying to aim for. That way you won't be shooting in the dark and potentially cutting yourself short. Now, just as an example, if I were to say to you, would you like 200 well-priced customers that you can take your time on, get a good hourly rate, and have a little bit of room at the end of your working week or month or whatever to expand? Or would you like three to 400 very sort of badly priced work that you have to go like crazy to get around everybody and there's not really any room to expand either? Well, surely you would want those better priced jobs, that room to expand and that room that you can basically take your time that little bit more and do a great job and get paid well for it. Now the final thing I would like to discuss with you folks, and I'd like your opinions in the uh, comments box below on this entire topic we've been discussing today, but the options of traditional or water-fed pole. Is there a price difference between the two? Should you price differently between those two methods? Well, there's no right or wrong answer, but what I'm gonna do today is let you know what I personally do and why. So for me, I actually charge more for traditional work. And the reason behind that is that quite often, Doing a business or a home traditionally can take more time. And as you and I know, time is money. So if a job is going to take longer to do, then I will charge more to do it traditionally than I will with the water-fed pole. Obviously, it's a lot more effort to go and get your ladders out and go up to those especially higher windows and do that job traditionally. It's a lot less effort to do it with water-fed pole. But the flip side of that though is that water-fed pole quite often costs more to run, doesn't it? Especially if you're in a hard water area, it can get quite expensive running a water-fed pole system. So in your area, if your water is quite hard and you're pumping out a lot of money per month or per year running that water-fed pole system, you might actually want to increase how much you charge for water-fed pole work. Now what some people will actually do is they'll price the same for traditional or water-fed pole, it doesn't matter. What they'll do is they'll just give the customer a price and then they'll choose the method on the day. But what I always personally like to ask myself is, what's costing me the most to use, either in materials or time, and then charge accordingly. So, hence for me, my biggest expense really is actually my time, because using a water-fed pole where I live is quite cheap to run, it's very soft water. So for me, my expense is time. So traditional takes that bit longer to do normally, unless it's a ground floor level building. If it has higher windows to do, it's gonna take longer to do traditionally, so I charge more. So what I would do, I would price up my work as I normally would, saying, you know, a pound for that one or two pound for that one or whatever. And if it's gonna be a traditional clean, I make sure I add a small percentage on top but if it's gonna be just a water-fed pole clean where I can do that job a bit quicker, then I won't add anything on the top. So but do what's best for you guys. That's the best thing to do. Ask yourself what's costing me the most in materials or time and charge accordingly to make sure that you're not working insanely long hours, that you're earning a good wage in the shortest amount of time possible. That's ideally what we want, isn't it? So hopefully you've enjoyed the video today. Please, it'd be much appreciated if you could leave your thoughts in the comments box below about this topic of pricing, 
how you like to do it, what you find works for you, and that'll be really helpful for everybody as well that reads the comments. And just remember to price well, work steady, work smart, not hard. Thanks very much for tuning in, much appreciated, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, be good, and bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.